What's going on, y'all? Welcome back to another episode of the Bullpen. Today, I got two special guests for you guys. A little more special for me than you guys because this is actually family on the podcast today, right? <laughs> uh, and I was just joking with them a little bit. Like, I don't know anything about these guys. No. <laughs> <Ouch>. <laughs> no, 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 no. So let me just give you guys an idea. Just a, just a little idea of who we're about to hear from today, okay? These two, I, me and my wife talk because this is my wife's sister and brother-in-law. Okay, I'm not going to tell you names yet, right? But ever since I've known these two, they have been entrepreneurs galore. And I mean like traveling all over the world, doing shit that I never would want to do, but they're putting in the work to do it, right? Uh, literally, you know, like launch, la everything they seem to launch just seems to just have this beautiful, magical touch that everyone wants to order. And they've got this new thing that we're going to talk about that I'm about to order like five of them, right? <laughs> well, actually, no, no, no. I'm getting them for free. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. I'm ordering that shit, guys. <laughs> Friends and family, by the way, don't get shit for free. Order that shit, okay? Anyways, no more introduction. Aubrey and Ryan Nino. Thanks for coming on the bullpen, guys. Hey, thank you for having us. Too. Yeah, I'm excited about this one. So this is a unique one because I've only done a couple family members on the podcast, right? But this is actually pretty cool because it's not just like, oh, we're going to have a conversation about family, right? <laughs> Let's talk about, you know, how to have, you know, like we could talk about family or whatever, but. Tell me about your feelings. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. None of that shit, right? No, no, no. We're diving deep into what you guys got going on. But before we get into that, I didn't want to go into too much detail because when I, when I, like when I describe an entrepreneur, you guys immediately come to mind, right? Oh. Because it's not just you and what you've done, Ryan. Aubrey, what you're doing, you guys both always have some venture that you're launching. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing again? <laughs> What? 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 Yeah. And that's one of the hardest questions to answer as entrepreneurs. Like, what do you do? Oh it's my like, goodness! We yeah. um, yeah. I, I sell stuff. Yeah. <laughs> you know, our neighbor. Like, we just moved into a new yeah. place recently, right? And the first question they always ask is, "Oh, so what do you do?" And yeah. no joke, we've had to now be like, "Let's just simplify it." Yeah, because yeah. it's like we like to have our hands in a few different yeah. things, but yeah. uh, consulting. Yeah, <laughs> at that point, I'm a <laughs> consultant. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, we work for a company. We just leave it at that. Right. You know? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. We've worked for a company. Right. <laughs> All right. Well, let's get down to the let's get down to nitty gritty. What's yeah. your guys' story? How'd you guys get to this point? Because we're I'm not gonna tell everybody exactly what's about to go down yet uh let's let's kind of let them you know wait till we hear that big news right but what got you here to this point what's your guys' story well i would say aubrey and i we we've been married nine years now mm. so this next month we'll be in married nine years mm. and immediately after we got married we started working together in a work environment mm. which was definitely a little bit of an adjustment it was mm. a big adjustment yeah but you know it helped like we look at where we're at today mm -hmm. and the years of us working together it really has helped our marriage, mm. number one, but also has helped us work together. Yeah. Because um, we've, you know, ironed through all those wrinkles. <laughs> yeah. I think it was a lot about learning what we are each good at individually mm. and then how we can each complement each other. Because mm. at first it was like, well, you know, he's very detail oriented where I'm just like, let's just get it done and move forward. Let's move the pin from A to B. Mm. And um, so that's how we kind of balance each other. We just have... Mm. Different trades, but they complement. And mm -hmm. over the years, they've shifted. Well, yeah. like we both are, have. Wait, hold on. You guys are not the exact same. <laughs> no. Like what? Can you imagine? It <laughs> would never work. I thought marriage you had to be the exact same person. It would never work. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's what's good is we actually complement each other now. Yeah. Yeah. And over the years, we've seen our our traits and our talents adjust and improve in different areas, and we've been able to recognize it. But mm -hmm. for us, I grew up in a very entrepreneurial family. Yes, as that's you right. Know. Yeah, right. And so right out of high school and stuff i went right into sales mm. i enjoyed sales yeah. it really that was probably the most door to door no not door to door oh. it was actually network marketing ah uh, but <laughs> I, I, I let me let me just sorry i don't want to cut you off no. network marketing is badass and I believe network it's marketing. Hard. It is hard. It's but really hard. It is hard, but it's so it is badass, right? Yeah. Like some of the best, biggest, and best entrepreneurs of our day today came from network marketing. You know what? It, it's you know? so true. Yeah, and like, one of the things for me though is at at eighteen and nineteen. Yeah. It taught me how to try and sell to adults that looked at me as a right. child still. Yeah. And, but then I had people, you know, obviously mentors and everything at the time that were like, hey, look, if you always look at yourself as a kid, they're always going to treat you like a kid. Damn straight. And so those things quickly at a younger age helped me build some confidence. Mm. But um, anyways, we jumped into all sorts of different businesses with my family. Yeah. And, um, but eventually we ended up wanting to pursue our own things. Mm. And once we did that, it was, I would say... What? I don't know. How, would, how would you explain it? I think it really let our wings fly. Yeah. As cheesy that's as that sounds. Mm. But I think we were kind of under the thumb of other people. Mm. And we weren't allowing ourselves to do and make what we want of ourselves. And 
we also wanted privacy. We wanted mm. to do things our own <laughs> way, you know. Um, but you know what? If, if we didn't do if we didn't um, do what we did, we step back and mm. do our own thing. I think we it would have come suppressed us from what we're doing now. Yeah. Well, I mean, like you guys broke the golden rule of business. That's don't do friends with family and friends, right? Or don't do business with family and friends. Right? Yeah. yeah. No, I'm just kidding. That's some people's rule. Other people see it as a strength, right? Yeah. yeah. But you've been in that for a while. Well, and that's the thing is there were times where we had partners, it's like yeah. our family had partnered with other partners. Right. Yeah. And there would always be contention yes. because as partners, something's you're not always going to be aligned. Right. Um, but it's learning how to deal with the disagreements mm. and direction you want to take the company. Mm. And so that eventually when we ventured off just as our own, just with like my brother, brother-in-law and whatnot, um, we had to learn to work together and we mm. had a lot of bumps, a lot of bumps. Mm. And, yeah. but it was a learning curve and we also grew a lot from it. It helped us gain the confidence to just go out on our own because when you work with the same people for so long, you start feeling almost let's say a dependency mm. on, well, I'm so used to working with these people that have these roles. If I leave and venture out, I have what to fill I? those yeah. roles mm. or can I fill those myself? Yeah. yeah. And what we did is when we decided to leave working with our family, mm. we filled in those gaps by taking courses mm. and learning. researching and learning. Wait, wait, YouTube. Wait, wait, come on. <laughs> courses are a scam. No, my gosh. <laughs> no, 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 listen, I've, I've had plenty of DMs from really smart people <laughs> telling me that my courses are scams. Come oh, on. Oh, my gosh. Uh, <laughs> No, not if it's the right course. No. You know, a lot of smart people come out with great courses and it's worth the money. There's I am where I am who, because of courses. There's yeah. a lot of people who don't know what they're talking about and come yeah. out the course. So I think it comes down to you doing your homework yeah. <laughs> on oh, who oh, you're seriously. trusting to educate you. Right. Absolutely. No question. Yeah. And so that's what really helped us gain that confidence yeah. is taking courses, learning from people who had done it mm. and then just ventured into our own stuff. And that's really been the, yeah. the big kicker. For well, us. let me just, let me just phrase this. Cause I think if everyone's listening to this, they're like, okay, they've, they've been entrepreneurs. No, no, no. Like you guys have actually been entrepreneurs like all over the world. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that's, that's what's actually so yeah. fascinating to me that I actually want to pick your brain on a little bit here, right? Yeah. Is I feel very comfortable doing business in America, right? Yeah. I feel pretty good about understanding what the hell's happening here and all that it's stuff. It's very easy here. Yeah. <laughs> and then the idea of, you know, going to Thailand or China or yeah. Japan, right? Yep. Or, you know, uh, the Papua New Guinea, right? And I'm just yep. naming off a couple places that I know you guys have traveled Indonesia, in. Indonesia. Indonesia, Africa. Africa. Malaysia. Okay. I mean, <laughs> do we keep going? Yeah. Yes, that's We've what I'm been. saying. Yeah. yeah. You guys have traveled all over the world. Right. Yeah. Travel yeah. all over the world. You know, we could talk about Japan. We could talk about all these things. But you guys have not only traveled over the world, but done business yep. all over the world. Yep. Yeah. So what the hell is that like? So <laughs> you, you take first crack at it. Well, when we first traveled, we were uh, working with a network marketing company. Right. And we positioned ourselves in a position where there was nothing for us to do here in the U.S. for the company. And so it was one day, like, we always had this dream of traveling before we had kids. And I was like, hey, Ryan, like, what if we just, let's just ask. Let's just see mm -hmm. if there's anything we could do international. And I think Ryan would probably say he was nervous. He didn't mm -hmm. want to ask. Yeah. I She's didn't always care. been the more yeah. aggressor type of, like, I'm going to go get it. Mm -hmm. And I was yeah. always more timid, like, yeah. for the yeah. first half of our marriage. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we ended up asking, um, you know, the operations team and all that. And we said, hey, you know, is there anything international? And. They're like, actually, yeah, there is. You guys can go and be speakers and do the product demonstrations and sales on stage. And so that transformed into us, you know, talking to people, doing live demos. So I did the live mm -hmm. demo for skincare and their beauty side. Mm -hmm. Ryan did the financial side of the presentations. Um, and it was awesome. But I will say the one thing we learned going to all these countries is that if you have never traveled outside the U.S., mm. you have no freaking idea how lucky we are mm. to live where we oh live. Oh, my gosh. Because there's so, so many countries that are still way behind. Oh, yeah. Um, and so anytime we came back home, we were just like, damn, mm. we are so... I love the car that we have, even though it's not nice. I love that we have clean water. Like, just those yeah. simple little things. So I think that really opened our eyes to, mm. like, wow, we're so lucky. Well, and it was really cool because when we ended up doing the international traveling. Essentially they treated us as a team where they just sent us around the world. Mm. Mm -hmm. And, but right after we essentially, they sent us out there, they tested it out mm -hmm. and they're like, yeah, you guys are, you're fine. And then the next day we spoke in front of 40 people. The next day it was 400. Next day it was 2000. Now, are you guys yeah. are like a translator at that point? Yeah. Or yeah. So yeah. they had translators okay. everywhere we went. Okay. So yeah. that's yeah. interesting. So you're presenting on stage. So a bunch of people don't speak English. Oh, they're speaking yeah. Bahasa, you know, <laughs> Indonesian. And so, you're sitting there like, 
okay, yeah. so you would speak, and then it was hard because you would speak, yeah. then you'd have to pause, yeah. and then let the translator talk, yeah. and then uh. you'd kind of be like, are you, are you finished? <laughs> yeah. Also, Anyways. like, jokes don't translate. Oh, my gosh. So, they like, we learned every time. that early on. Like, you don't tell jokes. Yeah. They don't never, you nobody ever yeah. gets them. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, it was, oh. Oh, it was awkward. We yeah. would laugh, and the whole the whole audience of two, 3,000 people would just be crickets. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, our stage fright. We definitely don't have stage fright. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think the largest crowd we did was 8,000 in Africa. Wow. Um, yeah. And it's like humid and hot, and everybody is like sweating on stage. <laughs> and Everyone's like, got sweat, yeah. And yeah, it's bad. But was that indoor or outdoor? It was indoor. indoor. indoor they had yeah. one six foot AC unit at the back of the no. auditorium. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Geez. Yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. Like, break this down for me because I'm actually yeah. very curious about this, right? How do you put on an event in Africa or Indonesia? Like, how do you even go about doing that? I mean, not like. What are you running Facebook ads? No, like, no, 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 no. So, no. Putting up a billboard like <laughs> in the safari. No. <laughs> no, you know what? So that's what was really eye opening to us because oh. when we would go there, they actually had it down pretty good. Yeah. Essentially, they had the a full mm. a full operations team that was all for the events. Mm. And Event planners. And, mm. Oh, because there was about twenty of us that would travel together. Yeah. But sometimes we would just travel alone. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, we would show up and they would have the whole auditorium ready. That have the projectors all ready. Yeah. The, just. Everything it's definitely was an operations smooth, team. But yeah. it, they would spend, it was a lot of money. Every time we'd go on a trip, they'd spend a few hundred grand on yeah. just I a few of us. I think when we added up like how much travel we paid for it, mm -hmm. it would, just for us two, it probably would have been like $750,000 of travel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Between flights, hotels, food, yeah. transportation, all that. Because right. yeah, it was about two years, we went to 33 countries. Yeah. And we would go to them repeatedly too. So wow. it was just, yeah. we were living out of suitcases. Yeah. But what it did Whoa. is it gave us, you know, confidence mm -hmm. outside of the U.S. as well. Yeah. And that's what eventually led to us doing the internet business in Papua New Guinea. Yeah. Right. Because that's still going, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's yeah. still going. That's about So you seven, have a business that now. is internet in Papua New Guinea. And I'm saying yeah. that because mm -hmm. it's still crazy that I, when I say that a lot, but I know about it. But for everybody listening, <laughs> yeah. you guys currently own a internet business in Papua New Guinea. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So it's an internet <laughs> yeah. service provider for businesses. And But it was a grind. We yeah. did things that most people wouldn't do. And that's, that's what, what I was talking really about. Hard. Yeah. The way you were traveling, dude, I was like, damn, dude. Yeah. Like, yeah we, so when we started it, we essentially what we did is we went and raised raised a bunch of money. We raised mm. about a million and a half dollars from the local people in Papua New Guinea. Mm. We did a local raising. Wow. And so my brother and my father and I, we traveled mm. for seven months, just cycling who would go down and try and raise money. And we mm. raised enough. We had a lot of issues with the business provider of the internet, yeah, the right. internet provider. They had a lot of issues that yeah. they weren't transparent with us on mm. us. Um, or with us. So eventually we had to then go and raise more money down the road. Mm. Um, got a great investor, mm -hmm. really helped us then scale it and turn it into just a solid business. Yeah. Um, but now a new provider's coming and we're going to be capitalizing on it. But wow. that's, they've been working on it for uh, two years, yeah. uh, this company. Anyway, so yeah, it's, it's a great solid business. Yeah. I would say it's a small business, but you know, you do. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, well, here's what's funny. It's like, uh, like, I, like that's what we're saying. We're like, we're talking about all these launches and all this shit like around the world. But then it's even like, like you just had your paintings listed in like, like these, these like, like you, so you just start, you just like took a painting, right? And all of a sudden now your yeah. paintings are in like, you know, like, what do you call it? You don't call them stores. Like, you know, like furniture, furniture store, stores. stores. Yeah. All of a sudden, yeah. Design stores. Like all of a sudden your shit's like getting sold like <laughs> there. Right. And you just like took it up as a hobby. Right. And then you're doing the real estate stuff. I'm like. I'm like what? What the? What, I know. That's why we don't tell people everything that we do because it just I mean, kind of sounds like what? Yeah. How do you do that? But you know what? We've we've really explored mm -hmm. um, things that we've wanted to try. Yeah. And we're very business minded, and so even though it may be a hobby, we then are like, oh, how is this something we could just turn into a you know a source of income? Mm. Even on just like a small level of just like oh yeah, it's just additional income off yeah. of something I like. Yeah. It's not like oh I'm trying to make this my full time thing. It's like oh if I can make additional income off it, mm. that's instantly where our brain goes or like mm. if we're talking with people which i'm sure your brain's like this right. they start telling you about what they're doing you're instantly like oh you could try this you yeah. could do this yeah. you could right. you know what i mean mm -hmm. but that's just where we go now that's all we talk about yeah <laughs> is uh doing different business ventures but do you guys ever think you're gonna slow down one day you know kick back in the countryside <laughs> and just ride off in the sunset or that's what aubrey wants to do one day. yeah, <laughs> yeah that's, that's 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 the question is like it almost sounds miserable you know like to like not have something to do right yeah like and not not just like it's like because there's something about business that's different than just like oh i'm making money right it's 
no, I have something to do that I love that pushes me, right? That yeah. takes me to another level that is in a new industry or whatever it is. And I think that's where, you know, entrepreneur minds really are misunderstood is you constantly are pushing for something because what else is there to do? Yeah. You know, like, oh. like you can give me this lifestyle, but like that sounds boring to me. Well, right? n- now I look at back when we weren't doing all of these things. And I'm like, what did we do with our what time? What did we do with our time? Like, what did we, we just watch shows? Yeah, we didn't have kids. Now we got three kids. We homeschool them and everything. And it's like, how and we on do earth? The businesses, yeah. Yeah. It's balanced. But so then once we did the, once you guys did the, you know, internet company, yeah. after f- what was it, three years, four years of doing that, we decided to take a step back mm. and we really wanted to give ourselves a chance to do our own thing. Yeah. And so then after that, um, you know, you got a job doing something for um, a really high end company. Yep. We st- he started taking on graphic uh, clients for mm. design work and all yeah. of that. And then I got my real estate license because all well, I wanted to sell real estate and yeah. I thought it's a great flexible job I could do from home right. with the kids. But then that turned into, um, you know, every time I sold a house, we actually would buy an investment property. So mm. then, right. then it was turned into like, Hey, now we have a few investment properties. We're getting one in St. George. Mm-hmm. Um, and so there's some things that we don't like to tell people because, you know, my mm-hmm. real estate is a job. Yeah. Yep. But I also do it for pleasure and mm-hmm. we do it for ourselves. And, and also when we buy a house, we it's a great financial decision because you get to represent the house. And so it's yeah. like, mm, you know, yeah. there's many benefits to it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we both have our, you know, our focus. Um, real estate is a nice focus. I do paint, like you said. Right. That was more of a hobby that kind of turned into. Another cash flowing. Uh, <laughs> cash flowing income yeah. stream, which is really nice. What's but next, strawberries? Yeah. Hey, my she garden has been beds. gardening. I know that's what don't, don't hate on those garden beds, man. <laughs> um, yeah. So, I mean, we definitely have our hobbies, but um, we're definitely, you know, he has a solid marketing business and then yep, this yep. new product that we're launching is going to, it's going to be our main focus. Well, let's talk about that then. Yep. <laughs> why don't we, why don't we give the audience a little break and just let it, let them know what the hell's happening here? Because, you know, listen guys, all these businesses are really cool. Right. But to me, this is probably the coolest one. We have to agree. Yeah, no, we we agree with you 100%. Thing. Okay. Because <laughs> listen, you know, like, I, I, yeah. you know, painting, that's beautiful. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, awesome, yeah. right? Internet, no, cool. You know, like, internet, that's very important. <laughs> <laughs> but this, yeah, this is dope. Right? Yeah. <laughs> like, when you guys told me about it, I was like, damn, that's cool. I know. When we saw that you were sold, we're like, <laughs> I was nah, like, this I was is like, a good <laughs> one. <laughs> Can I get one? So, yeah, when the product pitches itself, you know, it's like, you got you got something good there. And obviously, with the, you know, with the way it's already getting built up and like the amount of, you know, interest you guys yeah. already have after what, just a couple months? Yeah, uh, two months. You know, like you guys are probably going to be on Shark Tank soon, right? <laughs> you know what? Every, we have um, had yeah. so many people say that to us. When well, you guys should go on Shark Tank, Shark Tank. Like this is know, a perfect product to go on Shark Tank. Yeah. Yeah. So honestly, is. I think yeah. we I mean, probably will a, try and get ourselves on that show when, one when the time's right. I know actually a couple people have been on Shark Tank. I'll ask them what they, what, what how I'm wondering how yeah, that experience is. Yeah, they have, all three of them got rejected though. <laughs> oh, shoot. <laughs> Maybe we don't want Maybe not listen to them. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, let's talk about this then. Yeah. I don't want to say it. Why don't you get What is this product, this mysterious, badass product that has just been launched? All right. So my family, grandparents, about 35 years ago. Mm. So before we were even walking this earth. Um, Wait, I thought you were 40. Oh, I wish. No, <laughs> no, I'm just the gray hairs. The, the gray good. hairs are coming through, man. Oh, yeah. No, <laughs> no but so about 35 years ago, my grandparents and also my parents were all messing around cr- trying to create another way to cook. Yeah. And because this is a product that's made for outdoor adventures yeah, for camping and whatnot. Right. Also for, it's a great product to have for emergency preparedness mm. and how it works is they, what is it called? Should we talk about it? Yeah. All right. It's called rock pot. <laughs> rock pot, baby. <laughs> yeah. So what it is, it's a portable cooker mm. and how it works is we have a patented rock tablet, which mm. essentially you heat over the fire Yeah. and it retains the heat. You put it inside a seven liter pot that we have that's yeah. patented. It's double walled lining, meaning when you put it in, you put your cooking pot in and you close it, it'll cook your food and keep it warm for nine hours just from that tablet. And so you can yeah. literally carry your pot around as yeah. you as it's cooking and take it wherever you want to go. But essentially it's a seven liter pot. So uh-huh. you can cook food for up to six people, which is great for families. Right. Yeah. And because we have it double walled lining with stainless steel yeah. as it's cooking in there, the food, 
it's cool to the touch. So you can literally, it's not like, oh, a Dutch oven yeah, where right. once it's cooking, yeah. you got to let that yeah, baby sit until it. it's done. You don't done. even touch it. Right. You don't even move it until it's exactly. done. I love Dutch oven cooking. Like, so do we. I mean, like, we have them. Do you know yeah. how many things I have saved on my Pinterest? <laughs> yes, I have Pinterest. Every one single one of you should have Pinterest, right? Is of all these cooking recipes of like, like how to make uh, like chili in a Dutch oven, right? Yeah. Or uh, uh, what do you call it? peach cobbler in a Dutch oven, yeah. right? Yeah. All these things say it. I'm like, I can't wait to make these. <laughs> yeah, see, but instead of you having to sit there and yeah. maintain it over the fire for, and let's say it's an hour, it. two hours, mm. stay with it. Because you have to maintain Dutch ovens as you they're don't cooking. don't leave it alone and come With back. literally the rock tablet, you heat that puppy up on a fire, put it in the pot, and that's all you got to do. Yeah. And then just close the lid. It's so convenient. It's leak proof, all that. So even if it rolls down, down the hill, it's not going to spill a bit. Hmm. Yeah. So, so can it withstand a bear? You know, <laughs> let's go try. We it should out. try that. Throw it in what the was woods. that one? What There's was that only one, one way to find out. That's actually a good idea. We should do that because what was that one out of the Yeti? Like, uh, could a uh, Yeti survive a bear, right? And it didn't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I bet it would rip this I, apart. <laughs> yeah, I probably. I don't yeah. know. I mean, it's a food grade stainless steel. It's pretty. It's pretty yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, that okay. So that's what's that's what's so fucking cool about this is like. Correct me if I'm wrong. It's basically. Uh, a, not, not a pressure cooker or a slow cooker, but portable. So you don't need to plug it in or have electricity. Correct. And like that's like the biggest hack ever that every yeah. Relief Society mom or mom out there <laughs> is cooking in there. Is that what it's called? The, the it's slow like a, cooker? Yeah. Right? Isn't there crock another pot? crock pot? That's it. Crock pot. Thank you. Where like just like you can cook damn near anything in those. Yeah. Right? And you just kind of let them sit overnight or let them sit and it just yeah. cooks it for you. Set the time. It's done. From my understanding, correct me if I'm wrong, it pretty much is that but you don't need to plug it in you don't no need electricity, electricity yeah. and you don't need propane so we like to say power free mm, however yeah, right. people still consider a fire power right, right so you don't need propane you don't need electricity all you need is a f simple fire yeah. and you just put the rock tablet in the center of the fire you let it heat for 30 minutes and then you just throw in your rock pot and then you know rock pot it's great for all types of slow cooker mm -hmm. meals. We've done slow cooked ribs. We did a slow cooked pulled pork, you a six pounds. You like, haven't done any of these for me. Hey man, <laughs> whenever you're so busy, you just sure. don't come over for dinner. Yeah, I know. I'm so busy for ribs. <laughs> 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 um, but you know, it's really great. It's super universal. You could also mm -hmm. do it for coffee, hot chocolates, right. liquids. Yeah. So it's so universal. And you know, we get asked, so what's the difference between this and a Dutch oven or mm -hmm. this and, um, you know, a jet boil or something else yeah. that you would use. The thing is, is that it's, portable like mm -hmm. you don't have to sit there you can cook, take your slow cook, cooked right. ribs while it's cooking yeah. with you pack right. it in the back of the car yeah. put it on your razor bring it on your boat and while it's cooking your hunters, food that's why so a lot think, of hunters though yeah and hunters too because they can throw it in the back of their you yeah. know their razor yeah and yeah. take it with them and then right. when they're done they got a nice pot of chili or yeah. they got yeah. beans whatever they want yeah but we can also you can also boil water in it so for dry food, I was going to ask you mm -hmm. like rice, pasta, does that cleanse water? So like, say you're near a river, like, you know, yeah. like typically you boil the water, you know, to yep. clean the water. Mm -hmm. Right. Yep. Um, you know, obviously you don't want to lose the water, but yeah. For water purification. Yeah. But yep. still, this would still act like that as water. Yep. Pure. Wow. Yeah. Exactly. So that's why this product is so good for emergencies, not yeah. just for camping outdoors where yeah. it gives you, cause again, like we've <clears throat> talked about, yeah. you have either a grill electric yeah. uh griddle or you're gonna have like a propane stovetop right when you're camping yeah but you can never do how, how can you do a slow cook you know uh pot roast yeah when you're camping what, yeah. you can't do that yeah. right. or what are you gonna sit it over a fire for that long or over a stovetop mm -hmm. so with this you can now bring foods you've never been able to bring camping um or on your adventures but also the emergency preparedness side where you don't need anything but a fire to cook in it huh. it's super yeah. convenient that's cool that's dope. So, yeah. I mean, I'm a slut for emergency preparedness. Though, <laughs> right? <laughs> I mean, I, I, have you get, you guys have been in the basement, right? You've seen that shit, I've, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I just ordered the 260 gallon, you know, um, uh, tanks for water, right? And they're, they're cool because they stack on top of each other, right? And then I've got the guns and the ammo and a lot of it, right? So that's why we'll be going right to your house. <laughs> yes. If that's our coming to you. <laughs> if you. Well, if I have the rock pot, I don't need you. <laughs> <laughs> no, but we need you. We need oh, you right. Right. Oh, okay, gotcha. can't do a whole lot with just our, our pistol. <laughs> <laughs> I need the strawberries. <laughs> yeah, no, like all the guns and stuff like that, right? But then like, I have over two years of food, right? That that yeah. I've got sitting there that, I, you know, I just love it. Like, yeah. you know, yeah. like I think every, every, everyone who loves America and loves, you know, like the country life loves the idea of like being self-reliant, right? Yeah. Which is why I'm actually like all for like solar. 
Yep. You know, yeah. so, something interesting is like, like a lot of these dudes, you know, like, oh, gasoline and all that stuff, you know, because you kind of get, you know, the same group of people who are like, no, gasoline's the way to go. I'm like, uh-uh. If you have a solar-powered car, that's dope, yeah. right? Like, if you have a solar-powered home, that's dope. I don't yeah. need anything. I don't have to drill for yeah. oil. I have, un, you know, yeah. like, power forever, right? Yep. And the thing that what's crazy about that, oh, wait, can you heat this up, like, through, like, solar stuff or, like, electrically? So there is. So no like, way. Well, so, can. like, so let's say, well, let's just use an electric stovetop, for example. Oh. It'll retain the heat from that. But then yeah. there's also solar products out there. Like, they look like a little dish yeah. that mm -hmm. people use to cook, like, pots on. You can heat it up on those types of products yeah. as so well. So the rock tablet, I mean, our marketing is that you just put it over a fire. Uh -huh. However, it can be heated. The rock tablet can be heated multiple ways. Yeah. Over a stovetop. It cannot go in a microwave. Don't do it. Like, don't yeah. be dumb. Yeah. Don't put it in a <laughs> microwave. Did you test that? <laughs> Honestly, I'm not, not in my no, microwave. No, we've been informed not to test <laughs> it. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's, um, just, let's just put that disclaimer. Uh, if you <laughs> test it, uh, do it at your own risk, but let me know how it goes. It is not, yeah, it's not Please covered it. with a limited lifetime warranty, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, but yeah, a fire, um, a solar cooker or a solar it's heating like a solar unit. Dish, yeah. 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 Um, and then we also have the stove top. Obviously, you can throw it over a propane gas, yeah. you know, but at that point, it's like, well, you know. Well, some people m use it to prepare before they go out. Uh -huh. It's like, let's say they want their food cooking while they're out uh -huh. hunting for the day. Yeah. They can heat it up like at the cabin or at the house before. Yeah. And then they leave at five, six in the morning and they let their food cook all day, stay all nice. Yeah. And then it's ready when they're ready. Is there yeah. any product out there like this right now? No, and that's the thing is there's not. That's. And I oh, think that's dude, what that's makes so it. Cool. <laughs> and we've got yeah. seven different. There will be. They're going to be copycats. <laughs> well, no, no, we have seven you know aspects what? of it patented. Yeah. Okay. So there's can't recreate it's the, a, the we have a tablet. solid mm. patent pending on it yeah and in so. u.s and international Shit, oh my. yeah so we paid the money yeah. for yeah. the international stuff because we know the second thing. as right. everyone's seen it on kickstarter and yeah. everything it's right it's uh yeah yeah they're yeah. gonna, gonna want to copy be. it I, I, <laughs> <laughs> okay so. wait so that's that's what's so fascinating is because like listen like you guys both know in business there's there's really kind of two types of business it's improving what's already there yep. or bringing in something completely new filling, right? the, filling yeah. the need yes yep. filling the need or like you know just like reintroducing a whole new market right yep. and this isn't necessarily this is actually a new market that you guys are essentially creating inside of a very old market right yeah. that's yep. kind of cool about this is this one of the oldest market that markets there is probably one yep. of the most necessary markets there are but this is there's no there's nothing like this right now no exactly and i think that's why we've been getting such great positive feedback yeah. Yeah. From people, it's because it's like we mentioned a few minutes ago. It's always been those three traditional ways. Yeah. And However, I mean, cooking aspect. with stones goes back. I mean, hundreds of years. Right. Well, yeah. yeah. The, like so the that method, method yeah. isn't new, anything new. Yeah. But the way that we're able to take that method, yeah. put into something that's more modern and portable, yeah. that's what's new. I mean, to me, I mean, maybe I'm ignorant, right? But like, it's like basically a combination of Dutch oven, crock pot. And, um, uh, oh shit, what? No, yeah, maybe the other one, right? Uh, Dutch oven, a crock pot, basically, but then it's portable. Yep. Yes. Right? That's, that's what's yep. like, it's yep. like, because everyone loves Dutch oven. And no one's going to, like, everyone yeah. loves Dutch oven. How yeah. long has Dutch and oven everyone, been around? Everyone loves slow cooker, too. Yeah, yeah. everyone loves slow exactly. cooker. I mean, and now we, you can yeah. have both. Yeah. Yep. It's cool. Well, <laughs> it's and, and we were talking earlier, too. So, our rock tablet, you can heat that puppy over 2,000 times. So it's not like it's reusable. You're not like, oh, I got to get a new one after I've used it 20 times. Or it's I this thing is that. so yeah. reliable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Unless you throw it off of a house and yeah. break I mean, it on the cement. Yeah, okay. Trying to break it, yeah, if you're it trying will break. to. Yeah. But it's super, super reliable because yeah. also there's no technology in terms of like electronics in the product. Yeah. So it's literally the stone and you just throw it in the pot. So yeah. that there's no reliant on, oh, what if something goes out? It's as long as you don't throw it off a cliff. <laughs> or you know so what you I mean? can drop it on cement like you're purposely trying to break your rock tablet. Yeah, then it will last you. Yeah, so it, it can be reheated over like fifteen plus hundred times. I mean, it's like yeah. stupid how many times I you really could. Really want to test this out with the bear. <laughs> 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 Let us know how it goes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, this the, the reason why the rock tablet is so reliable though is the composite that we use. Yeah. The, the tablet can be heated to over a thousand degrees mm. or more without yeah. any fluctuation of how it holds itself together. Yeah. Right. So it can withstand major heat. Mm. And also, again, then it distributes that heat on a very slow curve. Yeah. So it's not like you put it in your pot and all of a sudden you have this spike. Even though the stone, let's say you accidentally leave it in your fire for mm. 45 minutes yeah. to an hour. And let's say the stone gets 800 degrees, it's not going to change the way it cooks in the pot. Like, yeah. what if you actually left it in there, like, overnight in the fire? It's fine. because really? Yeah, because what will happen is when you put it in the pot, mm. the pot can withstand the heat. Mm. And also, the temperature regulates itself because of the way the tablet distributes the heat from it. Mm. So, it 
it hits a level of heat and it just maintains. Mm. It doesn't spike. Oh, it's going to get 500, 600 degrees in the pot. Mm. Mm. It hits at a nice level and it just curves down slowly over the nine yeah. plus hours. And on top, there's a steam port. So it'll let, it will release yeah. pressure and steam from the pot and all mm. that to cook it nice and evenly. Because when the product, when again, as when we first started talking about it, mm. the product actually came to be with my grandparents and my parents back mm. in the day, 35 years ago, yeah. trying to, to create something like this. Yeah. But the problem was the material they had at the time, it was almost like a cooler looking cooler material. Uh huh. And like that pl- heavy duty plastic. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, and yeah. but then in between that and the cooking pot, it was a, a foam insert and it would expand and explode. So nice. like as things would heat up. <laughs> That's dope. But like they had the, they had the concept <laughs> yeah. of what they wanted. Yeah. But uh, about a year ago we sat down and we're like, hey, how could we actually find a manufacturer mm-hmm. that can make something that could withstand, withstand what we it. need? And so we searched and found manufacturer that could create what we needed mm-hmm. and, and it worked yeah. and we tested the heck out of it though. I mean, we had to, if we're going to yeah. bring it to market, <laughs> like we had yeah. to do our, we had to be 100% sure that this thing can cook and it yeah. can And cook. there were, and there were times where, you know, you make little mistakes and you learn something about the product. Yeah. One time we didn't put the cooking pot in on top and when we closed the lid With the rock and it just it. melted the like top, the whole lid top because there was no place for the heat to go besides the there's no inner cooking pot inside of it. Anyways, what I'm trying to say is we tested oh, it so much to find. Gotcha. Okay. So like gotcha. what happens is you put the rock tablet in the pot, mm-hmm. then you put your inner cooking pot on top and food. close the lid. Mm. But this time we were shooting our Kickstarter video and we were heating up stuff, making different foods. And someone made a mistake and closed the lid without with a the, cooking pot in it with no food. And so the tablet just, just roasted the top <laughs> lid and it melted it. We're like, Oh, oh good. To when know. you tell people, Hey, don't you dare close the lid if there's no pot in it. Yeah, never <laughs> close the lid if your heated rock tablet yeah. is in there. Anyways, cool. without yeah. the so but yeah, it's very reliable and um, it's definitely creating a new niche in that that camping outdoor space yeah. that um, people haven't been able to do. It's well, exciting. Here, yeah, well, that is exciting because here's the thing: is like, is I mean, <laughs> there's no question. There's no question that shit's hit about to hit the fan. I don't. Uh, we won't get political, but like, let, fuck it, fuck it. Let's talk about it, right? <laughs> Because even if we're not talking about here in the United States, how many times is there a natural disaster somewhere in the world? Actually, yeah. let's talk about the United States. How, like, how many hurricanes are there, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, like, we, we, we can already name a few, right? How many hurricanes are there? How many people lose their homes from earthquakes, right? Yeah. How many times is there an emergency? Not just when we talk like apocalyptic, right? Because yeah. that's yeah. what we all dream of, the apocalypse, right? <laughs> but there's actually something, something to be said about actually just being prepared for when shit hits the fan mm-hmm. at a natural level. Right. Yep. I mean, here in Utah, everyone's prepped for like crazy because, you know, they, they say we're due for a, a huge earthquake. Yeah. Matter of fact, I've lived here my entire life, except for, you know, a few years not. Right. And I've never felt an earthquake in Utah until the last couple of years. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, oh, well, we've been waiting for this to happen. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like yep. and you yeah. know, when that goes down or hell, we're talking about, you know, what's happening with gas and what's happening with. Uh, you know, the prices of gas or just the electrical grid, right? Can it handle this overload of new electricity and electrical cars? Are we going to have outages? In California, they have outages how how often? Yeah. Yeah. Right? You know, there's outages all the time. So this this alone would be dope. Number one, just take camping, right? Yeah. Dope, you know, like it'd be cool to have like when you're hunting or just cool to have in general. Yeah. But the absolute necessity of having something like this when something inevitably happens yeah. is to me what's so cool about it, right? Yeah. Because, I mean, I, I, you know, we can, I'll just say it, right? I think shit's going to hit the fan here in America the next five to ten years, right? Yeah. I really do um, in a way that pe- I don't think people understand. If you look at the way republics fall, if you look at, the you know, what happens, you know, to countries, well, you know, there's been a lot of countries that were very well off and that, that are not well off anymore, yeah. right? Yep. And, you know, things, things that start to go first are the infrastructure, the infrastructure that's been created because there aren't people there to supply it. When I'm talking infrastructure, I'm talking electrical grid and you know, like we're already seeing shit happen with gas and everything, right? And oil. So how do you prepare for that? Right. And I'm sure we could talk a lot about different stuff, but number one, at least being able to cook some fucking food. Well, that's some of the top comments (laughs) that we've had in feedback is, I mean, you guys have already had, can I, can I say the number like over however tens of thousands of people already, you know, showing interest and like wanting this product already. You guys just launched it. Right. Yeah. So I go, go ahead. Yeah. But the comments we've been getting are people that are like, Oh, this would have been perfect when we had the tornadoes rip through our, our Mm -hmm. our County. And then people, no, no, legit. (laughs) It's like people were, Kansas, yeah. Arkansas, you know, also over the there. Texas, um, the, what was it? The big 
The ice. The ice. That was crazy. The icing in Texas. Yeah, really yeah so a lot of our comments and feedback has been, I wish I would have had this yeah. for our natural disasters, yeah. and I, I'm i going to get one yeah. for when the next one hits. Dude, you know what's actually cool is like when you're in like colder climates, right? In colder climates, having fires and stuff like that, like especially if like, say up in Minnesota, you like ice fishing. Yeah. Having fires is not very, you know, plausible, right? Because yeah. you're out in the cold, right? This provides an option where you don't need that. Yeah, and right? you can have your warm meal. Because yeah. a lot of times yeah. people, they have to bring a small little propane mm -hmm. thing. They yeah. have, you have to elevate it above yeah. the ice. Uh -huh. You got to have that heat regulating out. Mm -hmm. There's ways you have to work around it. Yeah. But with this, if you heat it up before you go, mm -hmm. you can take it out there with the ice fish in. Mm -hmm. And again, you can put it right on the ice. It's not going to heat up the ice. So you don't have to do That's these workarounds. Yeah. So yeah. the cold climate, which we're excited because this winter, we're going to do a bunch of different videos I'm showcasing how you can use yeah. the ice fishing, snowmobiling, yeah. all sorts all of different of things. And so huh. it, it's definitely good for an emergency though, which you touched up on because yeah. the one thing you don't want to do. And I think what a lot of people found from COVID and all that crap mm -hmm. is when people started to panic, they went and took all the necessity things mm -hmm. and what you yes, don't, and right, what you don't yeah. want to do is if something happens where one of the people commented on one of our posts and like, we've been having, we've had 20 power outages in the last six months, California. Uh, I was actually somewhere in the Midwest, oh, Okay, but Interesting. They, they were like, this would be perfect for everyone in my neighborhood yes. because no matter what mm -hmm. we struggle to then cook and yeah. prepare food. Right, but if yeah. we had something like this, where all mm -hmm. we got to do is start up a little fire and we're, we're solid. Yeah. yeah. But, I mean, we even see this product. Like we would love to supply the states when natural disasters happen. Yeah. Like yep. I think that like obviously we want to give back to um you know Papua New Guinea right. because we're familiar with that. Yeah. Also the villages there they burn garbage to cook their food. And so we oh. wanted to supply rock mm. pots to them. One because we're familiar with the yeah. country with the uh. internet business, but um also we want to provide villages there to uh. cook their food in something that's clean uh. and you just heat up the rock tablet. Um, but however, we do still want to give back to our own home country. Mm -hmm. And so that's one yeah. of our goals is like, we have big plans to be giving back, yeah. um, especially for when natural disasters, we just gotta, we gotta make those connections. Yeah. Cause <laughs> what we, what we're doing right now is a portion of every sale yeah. we set aside to go towards giving back. Uh -huh. And one of the main countries is Papua New Guinea right now right. because 80% don't have electricity. Yeah. So yeah. they have, like Arby said, they're burning trash yeah. and that's where I've spent years years worth of time there and no matter where you go it's all the same it's yeah. horrible conditions people have terrible means of cooking mm. and this can allow them a, a better way yeah mm. and so we want to give back there but as Arby mentioned also in the u.s mm. okay well what's what's can we talk game plan like what's the game plan what's what's happening because i, I don't want to give away the details right yep. but it's already kind of been pre-launched people are starting to know about it right yeah so then obviously things are coming you know you guys know the dates whatever you're willing to share with me in the audience yeah so <laughs> kickstarter september 1st to the right end of, to the last day of september okay what so launch that, launch 30? is happening september 1st which we're gonna get this out to you guys before then by the way so you guys can all order that shit with Along with me. <laughs> Use my affiliate code. <laughs> no, right? We could. We no, could. no, no, no. No, no. None of that shit. <laughs> no, but we, uh, so it's all, the whole month of September. It's is, only going to be a 30 day Kickstarter, Kickstarter yeah. run. So mm. please support. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then after that, we're just going to immediately launch it in the U.S. And then as we grow, we eventually want to take it to other markets, right. Australia, UK, yeah. you know, all over. But we want to focus on yeah. the States first and really get our handle on the messaging and the marketing of it. And then mm -hmm. as we scale it, uh -huh. we then want to enter those other markets. Dude, that's cool. Now, let me, I mean, this might be a more business side question. Yeah. Obviously, uh, obviously, guys, you are considering, you know, like B2C. Right? Yep. Have you guys considered like B two B, like yep. with like shields and you know? Yep. I, mean, I would assume yeah. so. there's you know, Cabela Sports, Cabela yeah. yeah. RV right. World. Yeah, yeah. Ryan's RV. got actually a really great connection with the retail space. Good. Yep. Um, we're not. I don't feel like we're quite ready. We want to get Kickstarter mm. launched and done yeah, with. Right. But yeah. we have a great in with the retail space, so I think yeah. it's just all in. And it'll depend yeah. on how those contracts line up. Sure. Yeah. You know, Naturally, like if you yeah. want to get into Walmarts, that's a beast because yeah. they're buyback programs and stuff. You got to yeah. have a lot of capital. Yeah. And so we would either have to be ready to take on that risk mm -hmm. or, you know, we could take on smaller ones like Cabela, Sportsman's yeah. Warehouse, people like that, that will carry yeah. it. And those customers are walking in those stores every day. So yeah. Yeah. that's We're also going to be doing road shows too. We have a plan yep. to do all the road shows, the prepper conventions, the boating, camping, fishing. the fishing, the hunting. Let, let me tell you something. We, <laughs> we got to <laughs> <laughs> change up the look here. <laughs> I want you to grow your hair a little bit in that beard. Just get a little more fluff. <laughs> and then we're ready. <laughs> no, I know. I'm like, I'm just going to wear a black shirt today. I should have worn my outdoor stuff. <laughs> yeah. You should have just, yeah. Throwing on that hat. <laughs> we're good to go. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, but we're excited because, you know, we're going to pack up the motorhome and hit up the trailer. we got with a rock lot of work to do. I mean, it's a lot of work. I think if you ever home. launch a... Yeah. Do you guys get a motorhome? Our partners have Our a partners motorhome. have a motorhome. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say, like, when did this happen? No, like, trust what? me, we want one right now, but no. <laughs> we we wish, get, no. Our partners, they really want to kick it hard on the road shows. Yeah. And so, mm. you know, we'll just load up some yeah. trailers. And it's a lot of work. I mean, yeah. anybody's launched a business, you know, yeah. it's a lot of groundwork. Yeah, no kidding. You know, you don't get any of the benefits till now, the end. I, yeah. I've got a question for you. Sure. What were some, and this is totally kind of off topic <laughs> what we're talking about. What have been some of your biggest challenges that you didn't foresee in your businesses? Like as you were launching them, what were some roadblocks that you were like, I had no idea that was even going to be a thing. A great question. Number one, I, I tell everybody this, trusting people. Uh, don't trust people. Okay. That, that like that has been the number one thing in every business is don't trust anyone. And I, I, and I've, I've said this on, on many episodes and I've said this many times cause I've got that question a lot is I, I've been way too trusting. Really? Right. And it has bit me in the ass every time, you know, business is business, friends and family, you know, like, or, you know, and a lot of the time, you know, friends like working with me. Right. You know, I'm, I'm at least grateful that I've learned the lesson to start having contracts signed because that, that just protects, protects right relationships yep. right yep. um but at the end of the day you know like what my and maybe i i, I probably i can already hear someone like <laughs> you know t disagreeing with this you know but <laughs> it when it comes to business you know when you give away the world they expect the world right uh -huh. and i don't know obviously anything about your guys business with like partners or anything but trusting people as in don't trust people, you know, like yeah. prepare for the worst. And you guys are in the business of preparing for the worst, right? Yeah. Just in case, right? But that, that's my number one thing is like, the, tr the truth is the business works if people work. I yeah. mean, like, honestly, at the end of the day, the business is going to work if people do their jobs, right? If people yeah. are going to go out and put in the effort, if you're going to travel around the place, right? The only thing that happens is when people don't do what they're supposed to do. Right, that's when okay. shit hits the fan. That's when things go, you know, get in trouble because you're expecting someone to do something and then it doesn't get done, and now you're in a pickle, Damn. right? So for me, that's it. You know, like when I look at business at the end of the day, like, you know, marketing strategies, this is this, they're all great, but at the end of the day, it's a game of people. You know, that's yeah. all it is. It's just a game of other people's money and other people and relationships, and you know, it's it's not it's not not the same world as it used to be. So, so how do you balance all the crap you do? Because I mean, we try our best to balance what we do, but how do, how do you balance all the different ventures? You I don't do the on? operations anymore. Really? Yeah, do be, doing the operations is a job, right? Yeah. So I do the operations on the one I care about, the one I want to make sure gets done, right? Yeah. But then in the other ones, I've delegated operations to you know uh, hired a COO, right? You know, nice. like a quarterback, right? And actually, Dan Fleischman taught me this principle. Um, he in every one of his businesses he hires a quarterback. Okay. Because if you create a system and you create you know a product and you have something that can cash flow right and you yeah. everything's done, all you need is someone in there to run it. Because actually now it's really profitable. You t just tell them what to do. And I've worked with a lot of people. I've actually had ownership in a lot of companies now. You know like car detailing right or, or supplements or whatever you know company. Yeah. I don't do anything, and I don't I can't afford to do anything or else my yeah. other businesses will fail right. Um, but so I you've know now put people in places. Yeah. So then it frees up your time to focus on your big. Yes. Account. And I, there's no chance I could be the operator for all because you guys both know this. Like there's, there's a job and that that's time consuming doing mm -hmm. your job. Right. Oh, yeah. And then there's being an, the owner of a company and the job you take on for that. And that yeah. alone is more work than a job. Now take on seven of them. Yeah. Right. It's impossible. Yeah. It's physically impossible yeah. to be able to balance that mentally because my, like my brain still feels like I'm like, I'm just like, like, I'm just like, <laughs> like just I'm not even there. I think like it, a at zombie. times it feels paralyzing. Yeah. Like when yeah. Ryan and I will look at each other some days and like, I'm so overwhelmed. I can't even do a single thing Yes, because yeah. I feel so paralyzed with yeah. how many things we have going on. Yeah. And so I do like, um, like we were just talking about the other day is like, really trying to focus yeah. on, okay, what are we trying to focus on? We have our hobbies. Yeah. They're like nice little income yes. streams, but that's not really our focus. Right. So with a yeah. rock pot, um, that's our big focus of like, this is what we're going to focus on growing. Yeah. We want this to be right. a multi-million dollar business. Yeah. And we also want people to benefit from this product. Right. So yeah. Yeah. this you comes know, down to- You made to a good decision with the rock pot. The thing that Aubrey and I have done in the past is we've tried to take too much on ourselves. Yeah. And this time she's like, no, we need to invest into some people. So now we have some people that are doing things yeah. that, and now we're realizing how nice yeah. it is not even thinking about, oh, creating the ad campaigns or like managing all the ad campaigns right. and all the creative. It's like so convenient. Mm -hmm. <sighs> and that's where I got to give Aubrey so much credit is yeah. she 
helps put us in a better position to yeah. get more done yeah. by willing to invest into places where I've been more hesitant. Oh yeah. And I mean, I mean, here's things like when I say trust people, that means you still have to have people, right? Like that's yeah. things like you're both extremely talented, right? Extremely talented in figuring things out, being resourceful, you know, being creative, just figuring shit out, just getting it done. Right. Yeah. But at the end of the day, there's no chance, right? Like a multi-million dollar enterprise could ever be built without a, large team right like yep. like this podcast room you know you guys come in like this looks dope i'm like i'm like i didn't do it we thought you designed <laughs> no it. it's joshy boy right there i would not have been able to put like this production that we have for this podcast is growing so much because josh and colby are extremely talented what they do and yeah. i trust them to do that and they do amazing at it right yeah. you know or like like uh, jacob just comes up with some code shit out of nowhere right yeah. i'm like i'm not gonna do that <laughs> you know but yep. once you start yeah. hiring people in the companies it yep. you start start catching so much momentum. You yeah. Know? Oh yeah. And if, even if you want to keep like, here's something that I, I, I learned pretty soon is like there's businesses I want to keep, but I'm not going to keep any of the money. I'd rather keep the business. So mm -hmm. I literally will stick an operator in that business and say, you take all the money for right now. Event and I write up a deal like eventually I'm going to come back in and start taking money when there's enough profit. Right now, here's the entire system. Here's a perfect machine that I'll tell you exactly what to do. Just do this, 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 and put in the effort, and you get to keep all the money. Huge incentive for them. They get to make a ton yeah. of money or run a business, even create incentives, you know, and like, you know, them having potential ownership one day. Yeah. But now they're running the company, making a lot of money. You don't have to, you're not taking anybody per se. Maybe you're taking a very, very small percentage, yeah. but you're focusing on your biggest cash flowing machine. That's paying you all the money. And then you got these things growing on the side. You know, you know? And, and that's, so like with Aubrey and I, we've now decided we've, we've narrowed it down to two things each. We're each focused on two things, <laughs> and the other things, things are just hobbies. Right, that, right. You know, if we have time yeah. and we're feeling relaxed, we want to put some time and effort towards it. Yeah, great. But right. now it's like we've gotten to that point where we're just we have to hyper focus on it. Otherwise, we are not. We weren't being productive enough. Yeah. But now that we're in that flow, but also we're in a flow of how we manage our days because mm -hmm. again, we're both self employed. Yeah, we homeschool our kids. But so I work from one time to another. She works from the, that time on. Yeah, and then we rotate with the kids. Mm -hmm. And so, it, but we've gotten in a really good flow. But I think that's important to us because we don't want our kids with anybody else mm -hmm. besides us. Right. So we yeah. do or we structure our days that way because mm -hmm. we. It's important to both of us that we are present for mm -hmm. our kids at right. all times. Yeah, and we don't want them with a nanny. We, we don't want them with grandparents all the time yeah. every one now and then right. yeah grandparents right. parents are great but you don't you you want to raise your but children. we exactly yeah. and so we want to be present but we also want to be able to build these businesses yeah and we want them to be successful and we want to be present and Man, that's also us taking on the homeschooling aspect yeah that's a whole nother realm <laughs> that is a whole, whole nother realm. that's like because of yeah. our personal opinions of what our children are taught how right. long they're in the schools a lot of unnecessary things yeah and but it it puts that extra amount of emotional effort every day mm -hmm. being, I mean, as you and kids have some kids, you're going to see the amount of emotional drain that you get from it. Yeah. Well, <laughs> but we have two dogs. It's the same thing. <laughs> totally okay, not Sarge the same and thing. Chevy are pretty cool. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so anyways, it's um, it's been a learning curve, but over time we've really gotten into a good flow and now I feel like we're the most focused we've been, mm. but we're also taking on the most we've taken on because it's a lot starting yeah. a business, yeah. you know. Yeah. And yeah. so, yeah, it's definitely a, it's adventure. exciting. Yeah, nervous. we love it. Yeah. Yeah. We, we love the aspect of it. It's definitely tiring, though. Oh, no question. <laughs> no question. <laughs> That's why these gray hairs are coming in now it's at record speed. Yeah, no, it's <laughs> the most, it's the most uh, time-consuming thing you'll ever do. Yeah. Like, there's nothing else on this planet that could be more time-consuming than running and operating. Uh, and I'll say organization because, yeah, they're businesses, but there's just organizations, right? You want to you see the proof of that. Look at the aging of each president, right? And yeah. it adds a big organization yeah. that yeah. they're, you know, running and managing, right? But just any anything that you take ownership of, you know, at a, at a large level will drain you. And that's why most people can't do it, right? So that's yeah. why it's so impressive that you guys have done it over and over and over again, right? And you're constantly, you know, developing and growing. And I'm excited. Oh, we, <laughs> we appreciate excited. that. I'm excited to be like, yeah, the, uh, the, that's my brother and sister-in-law. <laughs> yeah, Rock Pop? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I, You'll I, see our billboards. Our, we'll have billboards. Yeah. We've got yeah. a lot coming. We... Uh, honestly, what we envision for Rockpot is becoming a essential preparedness and camping yeah, item. Right. Something that when you say Dutch oven, mm -hmm. we want it to eventually say, oh, did you bring your rock pot? Yeah. Or yeah. you bring your rock pot with yeah, you. Right. So that's exactly what we want yeah. it to be. Yeah, crock We want pot. that brand. Yeah. Hey, I just got that. <laughs> Maybe crock pot will buy us out <laughs> for a portable outdoor camping product. No. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, cool. we're excited. 
Well, awesome, guys. Well, I appreciate you guys, appreciate you guys taking the time to come on the bullpen. This was cool. No, we appreciate you having us on. <laughs> of course, yeah. <laughs> well, listen, you guys got this thing launching. Well, if people want to get a hold of you guys or if they want to learn more about this, we're going to drop this before everything comes out. But uh, what's the best way they can reach you guys or, you know, learn more about Crockpot? Yeah, they can go Crock to pot. the uh. – oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> <Oops>. <laughs> uh, they could go to um, Rockpot usa.com that's our website and then on there we'll have a link to the kickstarter campaign mm. for them to go and purchase and support and honestly it's the only time we're going to be running it at, at a at a this is the lowest time you'll ever see yeah. the mm. price at yeah the on the, the kickstarter price perfect yeah that's a- buying. after that no discount after that no discounts yeah there's no discounts <laughs> well send me the link as soon as that goes live i'm buying a couple of them perfect. yeah no, we do. appreciate yeah. it cool yeah <laughs> well appreciate appreciate you guys coming on guys september 1st this shit's going live uh, I'm calling it right here, and I know other people have said it, but I'm, I'm going to be the first one to say it live. I'm pro- we're probably going to see this on Shark Tank. So, <laughs> so watch it here first. <laughs> September 1st, this shit's going live. And if you listen to this and you like you know outdoors, preparedness, or camping, and number one, get your camo hat, right? Number two, <laughs> this thing's going to be pretty dope. I think we can agree on that. So I'm fucking excited. Thanks for coming on, guys. Thanks, Jeremiah.